إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوضا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم And the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها And the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours. وكل محدثة بدعة And everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. وكل بدعة ضلالة And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وكل ضلالة في النار Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثم أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he mentions that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ثَلَاثٌ مُنْجِيَاتٌ وَثَلَاثٌ مُهْلِكَاتٌ فَأَمَّا الْمُنْجِيَاتٌ فَتَقْوَ اللَّهِ فِي السِّرِّ وَالْعَلَانِيَةِ وَالْقَوْلُ بِالْحَقِّ فِي الرِّضَى وَالصُّخْتِ وَالْقَصْدُ فِي الْغِنَى وَالْفَقَرِ وَأَمَّا الْمُهْلِكَاتِ فَهَوًا مُتَّبِعْ وَشُحٌ مُطَاعٌ وعجاب وعجاب المرء وعجاب المرء بنفسه وهي أشدهن. This hadith which is in Sahih al-Jamah, Shaykh al-Albani, he authenticated it to be Hassan لغيره due to other evidences. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said he said three things save a person that they fear Allah in private and in public. That they have fairness in happiness and anger. They speak the truth in times of pleasure and displeasure. And they are generous in both poverty and in wealth. And they're moderate in the way they spend. And he said three things destroy a person. Desires that are followed. Greed that is obeyed. And a person being amazed or pleased with themselves. Meaning a man being impressed, impressed with himself. And he said in one narration, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is the worst of them. The one who is impressed by himself. So let us look at this hadith and break it down so we can be of those who through our actions we save ourselves by Allah's permission and we save ourselves from destroying ourselves. So that we meet Allah on terms of pleasure. Three things save a person. The first one, فَتَقُوا اللَّهِ فِي السِّرِّ وَالْعَلَانِيَةِ That you fear Allah in private and in public. Not just in front of the people. Not just where people can see you and hear about you and know about you. But even when you're alone by yourself, you're fearing Allah with the decisions you make, the speech you utter, the actions you take. On the authority of Abu Dhar, Jundub ibn Junada, and Abu Abd al-Rahman, Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhumah, may Allah be pleased with the both of them. He said that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, اتَّقِ اللَّهِ اتَّقِ اللَّهِ حَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُ وَأَتْبِعِ التَّرْمِذِي وَهَذَا حَدِيثُ الْحَسْنِ صحيح صحيح the Prophet ﷺ, he said, 
Fear Allah wherever you may be. Whether you're alone or not alone. Whether it's morning or evening. Whether you're in the masjid or outside of the masjid. Whether you're amongst Muslims or amongst non-Muslims. Fear Allah wherever you may be. At all times. Not just when you're in front of the people, but even when you're in private, fear Allah. Keep your duty to Allah. Know that He can see you and He hears you. And has full knowledge of you. Fear Allah wherever you may be. And follow up the bad deed with a good deed so you can erase the bad deed. And behave with the people in the best of manners, with the best of character and the best of ways. Have great character. Behave towards the people in such a way. This will help save you if you fear Allah in open and in private, in private and in public. That you fear your Creator. Hafsa bin Asim. He narrated that the Messenger of Allah, that Abu Huraira and Abu Sa'idin, radiallahu anhuma, that they mentioned that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Sabatun yadhilluhum Allah, fi yadhillih, fi yawm la dhilla illa dhilluh. Seven people will be in the shade of Allah on a day where there's no shade except for Allah's shade. Ya'ni tahta arshu. Except, يعني, meaning under the, his throne. It will shade people on the day where people will be running in fear and in sweat. The sun will be overhead. The only shade will be the shade Allah provides. Seven will be in Allah's shade on a day where there's no shade except Allah's shade. Some of these groups mentioned refer back to fearing Allah in private and in public. Mentioning them. وَشَابٌ نَشَأَ بِعْبَادَةِ اللَّهِ a youthful person who's brought up worshipping Allah. This doesn't just mean someone in their uh, single-digit ages or in their teens. The shab in Islam is the one who's even in his 20s and 30s. That in these ages, when you can follow your desires, you're not thinking about death. You're not thinking your life might end. You're worshipping Allah still in those ages where your body is strong, you're able, able to do things. You're capable of fulfilling your desires. Yet you leave it all off for the sake of Allah. And you still worship Allah. This person will be in Allah's shade on a day where there's no shade but Allah's shade. وَرَجْمٌ قَلْبُهُ مَعَلَّقٌ بِالْمَسَاجِدِ And a man whose heart is tied to the masajid. This is fearing Allah. That you come and you pray amongst the Muslims because this is what was commanded by our Prophet ﷺ. وَرَجْمٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهُ خَالِيًا فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنَا And a man who remembers Allah in privacy, in seclusion, and his eyes, they fill with tears. This person will be in Allah's shade on a day where there's no shade but the shade of Allah. You're by yourself. No one can witness you. You're not doing it for show. You're not doing it to, for the people to brag about you or to mention you in high ways. No, you're by yourself. But you're remembering your sins. You're remembering the last day. You're remembering your life in the qabr, in the, in, in the grave. You're remembering the mizan that will weigh your, your deeds. You're remembering the sirat that every believer will have to cross upon over Jahannam to get into Jannah. فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنَا This brings tears to your eyes. And the last one of the ones that are mentioned, we don't have time to cover all of them. وَرَجْلٌ دَعَتْهُ امْرَأَةٌ ذَاتَ مَنْصَبٍ أَوْ ذَاتَ حَسَبٍ وَجَمَالٍ فَقَالْ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهِ And the other one in Allah's shade that we'll mention that deals with fearing Allah in privacy and in public is the man who's called to commit zina by a beautiful, well-off woman. But he says no to her, he says, إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهِ and my brothers and sisters in Islam, we don't mention it much, but zina, committing, committing illegal intimacy or intercourse with someone other than your spouse, this is becoming rampant. And you'll see somebody who is a person who attends the masajid and prays in the masajid, and is well known amongst the Muslims, yet in secrecy he's committing zina and has no care or concern for it. While this doesn't take you out of Islam, you must guide your private parts. This is from the يعني, sifat, the characteristics of the mu'mineen, of the believers. That they do their best to avoid those things. So fear Allah in public and in private. Especially when it comes to these kabah and these major sins. You don't want to be on the wrong end committing them. And not having Allah's forgiveness for you moving forward. Fear Allah with respect to this. The second one will mention of the three things to save a person 
والقول بالحق في الرضا والسخط fairness and happiness and in anger speaking words of truth in pleasure and displeasure Allah's ayah and an ayah of Allah states it all very clearly يا ايها الذين امنوا كونوا قوامين بالقسط شهداء لله ولو على انفسكم او الوالدين والاقربين ان يكن غنيا او فقيرا فقيرا فالله اولى بهما ولا تتبعوا الهوى ان تعدلوا وان تلوا او تعرضوا فان الله كان بما تعملون خبيرا الله says in surah an-nisa wa means oh you who believe stand up firmly for justice as witnesses to Allah be fair be just speak what is the truth speak what is correct even if it's against yourself even if it's against your parents even if it's against your family members your kith and your kin even if it's against a rich person even if it's against a poor person Allah is better of a protector to both than you so follow not the lusts of your hearts do not follow the desires that your hearts tend you towards lest you would avoid justice lest because you love someone you're going to lie to get them off the hook or you're going to bend the truth so that they're safe from being held accountable for the haram they did <clears throat> lest you should avoid you may avoid justice and if you distort your witness or refuse to give it verily Allah is ever well acquainted with what you do fairness justice in happiness and in anger words of truth in times of pleasure and displeasure this will save you yawm al-qiyamah so always be truthful always be fair always be just even if it's against yourself or your loved ones you're doing them a service not a disservice abdul wahhab ibn ward he narrated from a man amongst the inhabitants of medina who said muawiya radiyallahu anhu he wrote a letter to aisha radiyallahu anha asking her advise me but do not overburden me so aisha umm al mu'minin the mother of the believers may allah be pleased with her she said <coughs> to him salamu alaykum peace be upon you amma ba'd as to what follows sami'tu rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam yaqul man altamasa rida allah bi sakhat an-nas kafahu allah mu'natan mu'nata an-nas wa man altamasa rida an-nas wa sakhat allah wa sakhat allah wa kalahu allah ila an-nas rawahu at-tirmidhi wa hadha hadith al-hasan aisha radiyallahu anha she told Muawiyah with the advice he sought, saying, make it brief, do not overburden me. She said, I heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, say, <clears throat> whoever seeks Allah's pleasure by the people's wrath, Allah will suffice him from the people. When you do what Allah commands you, even if the people will be angry with you, even if the people will hate you, even if the people will attack you and despise you, Muslim or non-Muslim, when you stay upon the haqq, then Allah will suffice you from the people. Allah will be enough for you. You won't need them as a protector, as a helper, as an aid or anything. But if you ever seek the people's pleasure by Allah's wrath, then Allah will entrust you to the people. And then she said, and peace be upon you. When you seek Allah's help, when you seek Allah's pleasure, even if the people will be displeased, Allah will provide for you and be enough for you. But when you go to aim to please the people, when you change the deen of Allah around, like a lot of the a'imma or the, 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 the so-called da'is or scholars or whatever it may be, like they're doing nowadays, playing with the religion of Allah so they can get a higher paycheck, playing with the religion of Allah so they can become more popular, playing with the religion of Allah so they get more likes on their YouTube. This is the sad reality of what's happening now because of social media. Changing the deen, Manipulating it to please the people, you're going to get Allah's anger. You're going to get the anger of Allah. You want to save yourself? Do what's pleasing to Allah, even if the people will not be pleased with you. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he mentions that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, من, من قضم غيبا وهو يقدر على انثاده ملأه الله, ملأه الله أمناً وإيماناً وقرأ والثاذمين الغيد والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين. أبو هريرة نريد سيد المسجد رب الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said, and this is a hadith which is Hassan. <coughs> he said, whoever suppresses his rage, he suppresses his anger, even though he is capable of unleashing it. You're in a position of power, a position of strength, 
a position of might. You're angry. You can hit someone. You can punish someone. You can harm someone. You can take from someone. You're in that position, but you don't do it. You're in a position of rage, but, and you're capable to unleash it, but you withhold. Allah will fill him with assurance and faith. He will fill his heart with contentment. Yom al qiyamah You'll be one of the ones who are rest assured on the day of resurrection. Because you controlled your anger. Then Allah, he, Allah's Messenger وسلم, he recited the ayah. <clears throat> they are those who suppress their rage and forgive the people. And Allah loves the good doers. Allah loves the doers of good. Allah loves the doers of good. So save yourselves with a good word in times of pleasure and displeasure. Save yourselves by speaking the truth in times of ease and in times of hardship. And you will find that Allah will help you save yourself. The last of the things the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that a person can do to save themselves. Generosity, moderation in the way you spend and being generous in times of poverty and in wealth. And we go back to that ayah in Surah Al-Imran. الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْخَابِنِ مِنَ الْغَيْدِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah says what means those who spend in Allah's cause in times of ease, when they have the money, the money's flowing in, they're not worried, and they spend it in times of hardship, they're worried about becoming poor, they're worried about how they'll pay their bills, but they spend in both times, and they repress their anger, they hold it back. And they forgive people. They let go. They pardon. They don't hold grudges. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. Allah loves these people. They are the good doers. The muhsineen. These are their traits. Giving in times of ease and in hardship. Controlling their anger. Forgiving and pardoning men. Abu Huraira, he narrated that a man, he asked the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which sadaqah is best? فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أن تصدق وأن تصحيح حريص تأمن البقاء البقاء وتخشى الفقر ولا تمهل حتى إذا بلغت الحلقوم قلت لفلان كذا ولفلان كذا وقد كان لفلان This hadith which is in the Sunnah of Abu Dawood, Sheikh Al-Albani, he authenticated it. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said the best sadaqah, the best charity is the sadaqah, the charity you give when you're healthy. You think life is in front of you, so you, you have the mindset maybe to store the money away because you have a long life to live, but you still give. Greedy, wanting to have more wealth because you have plans or things to do. Expecting survival, but fearing poverty. Expecting you have many more years to live, but you're afraid of becoming poor. <clears throat> and do not postpone it until your death comes. And then you say, give such and such to this person and such and such to that person. It was already written for them to have what you had already then relinquished to them. Do not wait till that time. Give in charity. This generosity will save you in good times and in bad times when you give. And in stressful times when you give in the way of Allah. These are from the things that can save a person. And be moderate in your spending. The wealth you do have, be moderate. Remembering the ayah, إِنَّ الْمُبَذِّرِينَ كَانُوا أَخْوَانَ الشَّيَاطِينَ وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِرَبِّهِ كَفُورَ Remember this ayah. Because this isn't just giving in times of hardship and in times of ease in charity, but it's also being moderate in the way you spend in times of ease and in times of hardship. Allah is saying what means, verily the spendthrifts, the wasteful spenders, the extravagant spenders, they are the brothers of the shayateen, of the devils, and the shaytan, Satan, is ever ungrateful to his Lord. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, a beautiful hadith from the Prophet صلى الله عليه three things to save a person. He said there are three things to help a person save themselves: fearing Allah in public and in private, being fair in happiness and in anger, speaking the truth in times of pleasure and displeasure, and generosity in both poverty and wealth. 
and be moderate in how you spend in those times of poverty and wealth. And then he mentioned three things which will destroy a person. We should be all ears. No thought should be in our mind except to hear the words of Rasulullah so that we aren't the source of our destruction. Do not send yourselves into destruction by your own hands. The Prophet said, And the three things that destroy a person, the first of them, desires that are followed. You have a desire. Shaitan, he inflames that desire and you follow it. You dive into it head first. You have no care to hold back. You just go after fulfilling your desires. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّبَعَهَا مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهُ مُحَوَاهُ وَأَضَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَى عِنْدِ وَخَتَمَ عَلَى سَمْعِهِ وَقَلْدِهِ وَجَعَلَ عَلَى بَصَرِهِ غِشَاوَةً فَمَنْ يَهْدِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ اللَّهِ أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Allah says what means, have you seen him who takes his lusts, his vain desires as his God, as his Lord? All he cares about pleasing is the desires that are being, he's being called towards. And Allah, knowing him as such, he let him go astray and sealed his hearing and sealed his heart and covered his sight who will then guide him after Allah. Will you then not remember? Will you then not take heed and reflect and remember? Following one's desires is always a path towards destruction. And this is why it's the first thing the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned. When you follow desires, you're just following yourself or leading yourself into destruction. Uqb bin Amr, Abu Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, he said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, إِنَّ مِمَّا أَدْرَكَ النَّاسُ مِنْ كَلَامِ النَّبُوَّةِ الْأُولَى إِذَا لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَاصْنَعْ مَا شِئْتِ This hadith which is in the Sahih of Ibn Majah, the Prophet ﷺ said, amongst the words that the people learned from the earlier prophets. So this was a message of the earlier anbiya, the earlier prophets. If you have no shame, then do as you wish. If you got no shame, if you're not embarrassed, if you really could care less about being modest or having shame, then do whatever you want. Go ahead, follow your desires. But it will only lead you to destruction. Abu Umayyah al-Sha'ban, he mentioned, he said, I went to Al-Tha'laba al Kushan and I said to him, how do you deal with this ayah? He said, which ayah? He said, the statement of Allah, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu alaykum anfusukum la yadurrukum man balla idha tadaytum. He said, how do you deal with this ayah, the statement of Allah, where Allah says what means take care of yourselves. If you follow the guidance, no harm shall come to you. He said, well, by Allah, I asked one well-informed about this ayah. I asked the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about this ayah, this ayah. So he said, rather comply with it and order the good, the doing of good. And forbid the munkah, forbid what is evil and prohibited. Until you see that avarice, evil, is obeyed and desires are followed. And people prefer this dunya over the akhirah and everyone is amazed with this view, then you should be worried about yourself in particular, and worry of the common folk. Then he said, Sallallahu <laughs> قيل يا رسول الله أجر خمسين رجل منا أو منهم قال لا بل أجر خمسين منكم. This hadith which is sahih in the Sunan al-Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ then he went on to tell him ahead of you, coming up are days in which patience will be like holding on to a hot coal. You know the coal that you get ready for the barbecue? Oh, it's black in the beginning. You can touch it. Starts to warm up. You can touch it. Then it gets orange, and it gets hot. And if you stuck even a metal rod in it, it gets up to thousands of degrees, it could cause it to turn orange so it could be bent. 
holding on to your deen, having patience in these times to stick to the Qur'an and the Sunnah, according to the ways and the actions and the deeds of the Salaf the Salaf, the righteous predecessors, this will be like holding on to a hot coal. You won't be able to much longer, but be patient, hold on to it. Stick with it, because this is your source of success. He said, ahead of you are days in which patience is like holding on to an ember for the doer of righteous deeds during that time. If during that time, when everyone's following their desires, going off into sin, getting what they want, amassing wealth and amassing issues of this dunya, benefits only in this dunya, when they go off onto those ways, good deeds done at that time is like the reward of 50 of those who do the like of what you do. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, rahimahullah, he said, it was added for me by other than Utbah that it was said, O Messenger of Allah, وسلم, the word of 50 men amongst us or 50 men amongst them. The Prophet وسلم, he said, no, rather the word of 50 men amongst you. Holding on to your deen, even if people mock and make fun of you, even if everyone is against you. Holding on to the Qur'an and the Sunnah because we have proof and evidence, we have narrations supporting that sunnah to be implemented and followed and fulfilled. Holding on to your deen in that time is like you will get the reward. Having patience in that time, you'll get the reward like 50 of the sahaba. It's not 50 of the men amongst us today. 50 of the companions. This was the statement of Rasulullah wasallam because he knew times would come and the people would let go of their deen. For the sake of this dunya. Let go of their deen to follow their desires. Let go of their deen to obey what is haram or evil because it will quote unquote benefit them in this life. So be mindful of this. Desires which are followed can destroy you. The second one he mentioned was shuhun mubar. And three things, and the other thing that can destroy you, greed that is obeyed. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, وَأَرْضَ بِمَا قَسَمَ اللَّهُ لَكْ تَكُنْ أَغْنَى النَّاسِ the best of mankind, he told us, sallallahu alaihi <clears throat> and be satisfied with what Allah has given you. You'll be the richest of people. But no, we're never satisfied. Always greedy. When greed is obeyed, be mindful that you are only causing yourself or leading yourself towards destruction. Abu Huraira he narrated that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, "ليس الغنى عن كثرة العرض ولكن الغنى غنى النفس." Rawah al-Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu he said, richness does not lie in the abundance of worldly good deeds. Get it out of your head that rich means a lot of land, or a lot of money in the bank, or a nice cars, or a ton of jewelry. This is not rich in Islam. This is not richness to Allah. Richness to Allah is the richness of the soul, the heart, the self, always calling itself to account, racing to forgiveness when it sins, Seeking Allah's mercy and fearing Allah if they are not forgiven or granted the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. This can destroy the person. Greed which is obeyed. Don't let greed and that call for greed, don't let it even if the people all around you, that's what they're doing, that's how they're living their life, don't let that be your path. And the last thing which was mentioned that can destroy a person, وَعَجَابُ الْمَرْئِ بِنَفْسِهِ and the last of the things mentioned that can destroy a person, a person being amazed or pleased with themselves. A man who's impressed with himself. Mustakbir. He's proud, he's arrogant. And this, the Prophet said, this is the worst of the things that will lead you to destruction. And Abdullah radiallahu anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la yakhul jannah man tana fi qalbihi, nifqala dharratin min kibr, wa la yudkhul nar, يعني من كان في قلبه مثقال مثقال ذرة من ذرة من إيمان قال فقال له رجل إنه يعجبني أن يكون ثوبي حسنا ونعلي حسنا قال إن الله يحب الجمال ولكن الكبر من بطر الحق وغمص الناس. This hadith which is صحيح in the Sunan of the Tirmidhi. The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه said whoever has a speck, an atom's weight, a mustard seed. Something that you see, you know those specks you see floating when the sun rays coming through the window, the dust. Whoever has that much kibbut, arrogance or pride in his heart, he will not enter Jannah. And whoever has that much iman in his heart will not go to the hellfire. And if he does, يعني, the meaning of this, he will do his time and Allah may take him out of the hellfire for the believer only. 
So a man said to him, I like that my clothes look good and that my sandals be nice and look good. So the Prophet he said, Indeed, Allah loves beauty. It is not wrong to dress nice or to look nice. Just do not be extravagant in it. And the way things are costly nowadays, you see some people buying a pair of pants for a hundred and something dollars, a pair of shoes for five hundred dollars, a purse for seven hundred dollars. This is shayateen. This is what was referred to by Allah. The wasteful, the spendthrifters, the extravagant ones, they are the brothers of shaitan. But wanting to look nice and wear nice clothing or have nice shoes or sandals, this is not arrogance. The Prophet said, Indeed, Allah loves beauty. Pride and arrogance is refusing the truth and belittling and looking down on the people. This is kibir. When you look down on the people and you put yourself above them, you put yourself on a pedestal and you put others below you because they might have less than you or may not be as successful as you or as educated as you. All in quotes. Because success only comes from Allah. And until both feet are in Jannah, we got no rest. We should not rest. And we should not be content. And we should not be fine. Until we know both feet have been entered into Jannah. This is what arrogance and pride is. Refusing the truth, belittling the people. Jadr radiallahu anhu, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, إِنَّ مِنْ أَحَبِّكُمْ إِلَيَّ وَأَقْرَبُكُمْ مِنِّي مَجْلِسًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةً أَحَاسِنُكُمْ أَخْلَاقًا وَإِنَّ أَبْغَضْ أَبْغَضَكُمْ إِلَيَّ وَأَبْعَدُكُمْ مِنِّي مَجْلِسًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ الثَّرْثَارُونَ وَالْمُتَشَدِّقُونَ وَالْمُتَفَيْهِقُونَ قالوا يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قد علمنا الثرثارون والمتشدقون فمن متفيه فمن المت المفت ال متفيهقون كلمة عجيبة very strong words the way they translate the, the words the, the way they come off قال المتكبرون قال المتكبرون the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said in this hadith, Hassan in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi, and then he, indeed, this is the Messenger of Allah وسلم, saying it to you. You want to be close to him. You want to be with him in Jannah, then all ears. He said, وسلم, in the authentic hadith, indeed, the most beloved amongst you to me, and the nearest to sit by me on the day of resurrection, the day of judgment, is the best of you in character. The best of you in ikhlaq. First and foremost, to your families. I'm sick of the phone calls complaining of the, the husband's treatment of the wife, the wife's treatment of the husband. I'm sick of them. You're Muslim, Allah knows you're Muslim. You claim to be a Muslim. You claim to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Husnul khuluq khayrukum khayrukum li nisa'ihim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the best of you is the one who's best to his wife. And for those sisters, the same thing. The treatment of the spouses is gone down the tubes. Fear Allah with respect to this. You want to be close to the Prophet ﷺ, you have to have good character and good manners. That can't just be with your homies. That can't just be with your buddies. That can't just be with your people at work. It should be with your family as well. And indeed, the most disliked, disliked amongst you to me, and the one sitting farthest away from me on the Day of Judgment, are the Tharzaroon and the Mutashadiqoon and the Mutahayhatoon. They said, O Messenger of Allah, وسلم, we know the first two of them, but what is the last one? He said, Al Mustakbiroon. They are the arrogant ones. They are the ones who are arrogant, have pride, have given. Is it worth it? Who gives you the opportunity to put yourself on a pedestal? Wala to zakku al fusikum huwa a'lamu min al taqa Allah, he said, what means? Do not pat yourselves on the back and ascribe purity and awesomeness to yourself. Allah is best in knowledge of who has taqwa. And He will reward for it yawm al qiyamah. Until then, we're not ones to say that we have it. I will end with the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ from Harith ibn Wahab, who narrated that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, he said, Allah unabbi'ukum bi ahli jannah kullu ba'ifin mutada'af. ألا أنبئكم بأهل النار كل عطل جواب مستكبر رواه ابن ماجه This hadith which is sahih The Prophet ﷺ said Shall I not tell you about the people of paradise Again all ears You want to go to Jannah 
He said, it is every weak and oppressed one. In times of oppression, turn to Allah. In times of oppression, make dua. Fear Allah. He'll give you a way out of every difficulty. Do not turn to the haram. Do not turn to what is forbidden in the Quran and the Sunnah. You will not aid or help yourself in any way. And then he said, shall I not tell you who the people of hellfire are? He said, it is every harsh, every haughty, every arrogant person. Harshness, arrogance, these are not from the ways of the people who will be admitted into Jannah. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, summarizing the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, three things save a person. Fearing Allah in private and in public. Fairness in happiness and in anger, speaking the truth in times of pleasure and displeasure. And generosity when you have the money and when it's tight. <clears throat> and three things destroy a person. Following desires, obeying greed and the calls towards being greedy, and a person being amazed and pleased with himself. And the Prophet ﷺ in one narration said, this is the worst of them. May Allah make us from those who are saved and do not throw ourselves into destruction. Allah makhfil al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat wa al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat wa al-Ahyan wa al-Amwat wa al-Naka in tazmiya wa al-Qarim wa al-Mujib al-Da'wat Ya Muqallib al-Qulub tabit qulubna ala deenik Allahumma a'izza al-Islam wa al-Muslimin wa ansurna ala a'adaat wa a'adaat deen Allahumma a'izza al-Islam wa al-Muslimin wa ansurna ala a'adaat wa a'adaat deen Allahumma ansur ikhwanna wa akhwatna fi Filistin wa fi kullu makan Allahumma sahal umurahum wa nafis qulubuhum وثبت أقدامهم وارحم موتاهم واشف مرضاهم وتقبل شهداءهم يا رحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة يوم يصفون وسلاما على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين